Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this video, guys. My name is Yaqat Zaman. This is the 40 hadith of the Imam Jalaluddin as Suyuti, rahimahullah ta'ala. Does anyone know when he actually passed away? If you know when his death was, when he died, put it in the comments below. Right, so we have reached hadith number 22. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli wa sallim barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Man su'ila an ilmin. فكتمه الجمه الله بلجام من نار يوم القيامة. If anyone is asked about knowledge and conceals it, Allah will bridle him with a bridle of fire. This is a very important hadith for all of us to take heed from to understand. So, what's this hadith about? Now, as you guys know, we've been mentioning about the importance of learning about Islam. So, the knowledge of Islam is extremely important. However, there are certain things as Muslims we need to be very, very cautious about as well. So imagine, for example, like there is, this is the, uh, this is a pie chart. This is to show knowledge. Okay, this is a pie chart to show knowledge. So this pie chart actually shows us, in fact, let me try to use a different pen here. Try to use a better pen. Hopefully this will be much better. So how many people do you think in the world actually know about all the rules of Islam? Do you think it's 100%? Do you think it's 90% of people know all the rules of Islam? Do you think it's 50%? Now, the answer to this is that most people will not have studied Islam. And therefore, most people won't know the rules of Islam. So in that case, what we have to do is we have to teach people about the religion and as Muslims we have to learn about the religion just like we've mentioned previously a hadith that every Muslim has to learn knowledge if you guys remember what hadith is please put it in the comments below so the, the knowledge of Islam can only be passed on you can only pass on knowledge to other people when that person um, studies learns and when someone teaches knowledge. So learning is very important. There needs to be people out there who actually actively go out and learn knowledge. And there's also people that need to teach knowledge. This will produce a group of experts. Yeah. It will produce groups of experts. And these are the experts that people will come to and people will ask knowledge. And just like in the Quran, Allah says that ask the people who know if you don't know. So the rest of the population now, whenever they have a question, they come to scholars and they ask the scholars. And we need in every community, a group of experts in every single community, we need experts so that experts, you know, can provide the solution for people's issues, right? the Islamic issues, of course. So let's say, for example, like if we had, for instance, in every place we had a scholar, a scholar, a scholar, a scholar, a scholar, a scholar, a scholar. And people were studying with these people. So you had individuals who were actually studying with them. Then that means everyone would be able to get access, just like a beautiful flower. I can make this beautiful flower. You'd have lots of people who would be able to actually study by these individuals. And any questions that they have in Islam, they could ask. And it would suffice. So unfortunately, we have a lack of scholars. There's a small number of scholars in the world compared to what we actually need. So this is why the Prophet ﷺ he made it the duty of the experts that they must not conceal any of the truth of Islam. Whenever someone asks them a question, they must always give the answer. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if you don't do this, then the punishment of this will be that on the day of judgment, a person will have their, will have their face sealed or their mouth sealed. A lajam. A lajam is a bridle, just like you put on an animal. Their mouth will be sealed off and this will be known to everyone that this was an individual who did not used to answer people's questions when they really, really needed it. Now, of course, you know, scholars are human beings. Scholars have times that you come. So you have to understand as well, these people cannot just go and bug the scholars at any time they want. They can't just go and start. And this was something which Allah says in the Quran as well. There were some Bedouins and they came outside the house of the Prophet and they started calling him, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, come out, come out. Allah said that if these people had waited until the Prophet came out, this would have been better. 
Meaning everyone has an emergency, everyone has situation, but generally when people have knowledge, they can at least wait and get an answer. Now, how did the Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to teach people? So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they obviously used to have gatherings. They used to have what we call halaqas, where a companion would sit in a gathering and he would teach the people about the religion. And so this is something that one way that knowledge was spread. And there was also that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he also set up um, classes, paid teachers, and he took so many measures so that knowledge was spread across the across the people. And he also made it important to the people that they need to learn the knowledge as well. However, this is the big however now. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Abdullah bin Mas'ud. His name has come before as well. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He said, he said, if you know the answer, then say, I know. And if you don't know the answer, then say, I don't know. Right? Because half of knowledge is, I don't know. So 50% of knowledge is, I know. That means the other 50% of knowledge is, I don't know. So if you don't know the answer, do not mislead people. It happens, unfortunately, on social media. Someone will ask a question and then some random person who maybe only have 50% of knowledge or may only have like 40% of knowledge or some other will start to answer their question as though this is the answer absolutely uh, correct. And this is something that we don't want to happen. We don't want people to be harmed. Just like if you've heard the story of the man who killed 100 people or 99 people and he went and he went to ask someone, will, uh, will God forgive me? Will Allah forgive me? And the man said, no, God will not forgive you. He answered the guy with a wrong question. Yeah, And this led to people being harmed. So we have to be careful. We teach people, but we don't answer. If we don't know the answer, then we just tell the people that we don't know the answer. And also, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he has a famous statement. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says that I learned, I learned two large volumes of knowledge. Two large volumes of knowledge. He says one of those, one of those volumes of knowledge I passed on to the people. And the other one, he says, if I pass it on to people, my neck will be cut. Meaning there are certain types of knowledge which are dangerous for people. People are not prepared for that type of knowledge. right? So this is why people themselves should not be asking controversial issues, should not be trying to find loopholes or trying to find things that they can cheat in Allah's system or cause harm to people and problems. This is where the deen will become corrupted. And people, unfortunately, as you know, not everyone is thinking that they want to get close to Allah. Many people are trying to take advantage of other people by knowing certain certain piece of information. And as they say, knowledge is power. And sometimes power gets to people's heads and it causes a lot of problems. So this is why the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned that if anyone is asked a question, a legitimate question, where that question is going to benefit them, then anyone who has that piece of knowledge and is qualified to answer people's questions should answer people's questions. Yeah, and this is something which, you know, it's very important for us to have learners and teachers as well. And likewise, the experts are the ones that we should have, you know, at answering the questions. And it shouldn't be done by any person who has just studied a little bit and just enjoys, you know, saying things out there. May Allah protect us. Jazakumullah khair for listening to this video, guys. May Allah uh, give us the understanding of the religion. And Allah may Allah save us from falling into the category that has been mentioned in this hadith. Also, thank you very much to all my patrons for supporting my channel. May Allah bless you. If any of you guys want to become patrons, you want to support the work that I do, it means a lot to me. Um, I really appreciate uh, all the support that I get from you guys. Um, check out the description below. And I will see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.